It is also important to understand that VM needs resources to boot on the top of the virtualization layer. Just like any operating system, VM also needs compute processors, random access memory, or RAM, and storage disks to boot, as well as, store the files. Besides this, VM also needs a network, to reach outside of the cloud service provider's internet. Same as physical servers have network interface cards, NIC, virtual machines have virtualized network interface cards, VNIC. Hello, welcome to the next episode of Get Certified Together program by TechnoCoff, your free online knowledge sharing community. Visit our website, www.technocoff.com for more information. In this episode, we will be covering the next section of the CompTIA Security Plus Certification Exam. Let me start with the last topic of this domain, which also happens to be one of the key areas in today's IT infrastructure. It is cloud security. Cloud security is getting key attention these days, as more and more organizations moving their workloads to the virtualized environment. Various cloud computing service offerings, like Infra as a Service, Platform as a Service, and Software as a Service, are provided by the CSP, or cloud service providers, to the cloud customers. Another important stakeholder in the cloud-based paradigm is cloud service partners, who work with cloud service providers to provide add-on services to existing cloud offerings. It is important to note that cloud-based deployments follows a shared responsibility model, in which cloud security ownership lies on both cloud service providers and cloud customers. Organizations can hire third-party providers to manage their share of cloud security. MSSP, or Managed Security Service Providers, provide security services to any organization, which is looking for paid security services. CASB, or Cloud Access Security Brokers, handles security incidents related to the communication between users and the multiple clouds. Now, that we have a better idea of various stakeholders in the cloud service model, it is important to understand a few technical terms related to cloud computing itself. First, we need to know our key characteristics of cloud computing, or, why any organization should look to move its workload from old monolith data centers to virtualized cloud infrastructures. The first characteristic of cloud computing is, on-demand services, that is, services are available to the cloud customers as per the requirement. The second characteristic of cloud computing is, elasticity with scalability, that is, resources like CPU, storage, etc. can be added, or removed, on the go. Scalability also covers, the spinning of new virtual machines, as and when the need arises. This scaling technique is called horizontal scaling. The third characteristic of cloud computing is, resource pooling, that is, underlay hardware resources in the cloud can be shared by multiple tenants, or customers, without impacting the performance of each other's applications. The fourth characteristic of cloud computing is, broad network access, that is, access to cloud infrastructure can be provided to customers in the different geographical locations, on the internet, via VPN, or through a direct connection, in the least latency possible of up to few milliseconds. Lastly, the fifth characteristic of cloud computing is, measured services, that is, the customer pays only for what they use. There is no need of overpaying for the resources, which were not required in the first place. With all the key characteristics of the cloud computing model discussed, we can focus on how to achieve them in the first place. The motive of cloud computing is sharing of the resources among multiple users. Virtualization is the technology which helps in achieving this goal using software called hypervisors. With the virtualization, cloud tenants may create multiple virtual machines, sharing the same set of resources, from the underlying hardware. Hypervisors, can be deployed in two different ways, on a server. A hypervisor may be deployed directly, on the bare metal server, called Type 1. Example of Type 1 hypervisors is, VMware ESXi, and Microsoft Hyper-V. A hypervisor may also need another host operating system, to run itself first. They are called, Type 2 hypervisors. Example of a Type 2 hypervisor is Oracle Virtual Box. We have by now used the term, virtual machine, multiple times. But what are they exactly? Virtual machines, or VM, are isolated guests, deployed on top of virtualized servers, with their own guest operating system. Mostly, 
cloud customers create and work on these virtual machines, with cloud service providers managing that underlying hardware and virtualization layer. We must also understand various security risks associated with the vMIS. VM escape attack is the one where attacker tries to escape the guest OS and traverse to the host operating system and virtualization layer. VM sprawl attack is the one where the attacker identifies unused VMs, which are not deleted after use, thus accumulating unpatched vulnerabilities over time. It is also important to understand that VM needs resources to boot on the top of the virtualization layer. Just like any operating system, VM also needs compute processors, random access memory, or RAM, and storage disks to boot, as well as, store the files. Besides this, VM also needs a network, to reach outside of the cloud service provider's intranet. Same as physical servers have network interface cards, NIC, virtual machines have virtualized network interface cards, VNIC. By now, I have told you about how cloud infrastructure is created and how customers may deploy their VM, on top of that infrastructure. However, many times customers may want, to save themselves from additional efforts of creating virtual machines, before deploying actual applications, inside those VM. For example, if I want a MySQL database, for keeping my backend data, it would be quicker for me, if I can get the whole pre-built blank database, from a cloud service provider. Such offerings are called CSP managed applications and are sold as software as a service. Web servers, databases, or load balancers are some of the most common CSP managed applications provided a S software as a service to the end users. The key benefit of purchasing these services directly is that they are cloud native and optimized to give the best performance in the cloud environment. Another way to save efforts and time while creating new virtual machines, is by using orchestration and infrastructure as a code tool. Cloud orchestration and infrastructure as a code tool, enabling users to spin new VMs, perform various lifecycle operations, and remove them when not required, using reusable codes and cloud service providers' inbuilt orchestration modules. Now, let me bring the call upon the elephant in the room. Cloud, with all its benefits, leaves a considerable amount of fear among customers, related to its security. With pooled resources, access over the internet, and multi-tenancy, these fears are expected. But, to resolve these fears is not by discussing cloud versus traditional deployments, and if we can switch back to old times. But, by using defense strategies, and security solutions, built specifically for the cloud-based deployments. Now, as I said, Cloud security follows a shared responsibility approach, where the onus is divided among service providers and clients. Based on the type of the cloud model, like public cloud, private cloud, or hybrid cloud, and the type of service a customer is using, like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as service, the scope of the security responsibility shifts among the users and providers. Cloud providers deploy different mechanisms, with defense in-depth approach, to ensure on-premise level security to virtualized workloads. The first level is the security groups, which are created in the cloud as the set of ports, protocols, and IP addresses, which can be attached to any application or VM, to control network access to the application. For additional security, TLS-based encryption is used for the data in transit, while data encryption is used, for the data at rest. Virtual firewalls and secure web gateways, can be used to further control, and monitor, traffic going in, and out, of the cloud. Cloud providers also have, an inbuilt identity, and assess management solution, to ensure users with direct access to the cloud environment, can perform only those operations, for which they are allowed as per policies. Lastly, in the cloud characteristics, we learned about multiple geographically located cloud server sites. This brings, a new set of challenges to the end users, which is data sovereignty. Since, cloud provides global deployment options, where the user can store data anywhere. Few countries although, may have rules to bar local data, from storing in a different country. Cloud security, must cover this aspect, and ensure data sovereignty is not compromised. This is under end users' responsibility, to carefully chose their data storage location, to avoid breaches in compliance. This brings us to end of the episode 5 of the Get Certified Together podcast from Technikoff, 
on the CompTIA Security Plus exam. In episode 6, I will proceed to the next section of the exam, Security Implementations. Thanks for listening.